Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, let's solve a few problems related to cylinders. Um, I do suggest you to try to solve these problems just by yourself. They are really easy. Um, they are presented on unizor.com as usual. Um, I, that's where I suggest you to watch this lecture from. But first, try to solve the problems. They are in the notes for this lecture on this website. And then, um, uh, which the lecture my solutions actually to these problems which you might actually find some other solutions whatever all right so cylinders and the problems problem number one uh, prove that the section of the cylinder which is parallel to the base is a circle well um, what does it mean that it's a circle? It means that this particular um, uh, curve contains some kind of a point equally uh, distanced from all other uh, points of this, of this curve. So this is a flat curve. It's an intersection of some kind of a plane with, with the cylinder. All right, so how can I prove that? Well, I know that the bottom and the top are uh, cylinders, uh, are, of, of the cylinder are circles, right? So let's just take the center of, let's say, bottom circle and, um, and draw a perpendicular to the plane. Well, this perpendicular intersects my, uh, the plane, let's call it gamma. Um, which which cuts the uh, the cylinder, it intersects at some point. All right. Now, what I would like to do is I would like to prove that the distance from this point to any other point on that curve um, is the same. So let's just take one particular point. Let's say let, let's call this as A, B, C. Now, from C, I will draw perpendicular down on the surface of a cylinder. This is basically a, ge a, a generatrix, one of the positions of the generatrix as it's moving um, parallel to itself, perpendicular to the uh, basis around this circle. And let's consider this um, quadrilateral. Well, first of all, it's a flat figure. Why? Because CG is, as I was saying, this is the perpendicular to the plane. Um, and AB also is perpendicular. That's how I constructed AB. So they are both perpendicular to the plane of the base, which means they are parallel to each other, which means there is a plane which contains them both. So AB, CG is a flat figure. Now. AB is parallel to CD because they're both perpendicular by construction. Um, now, BC and AD, now, they're also parallel. Why? Because you consider the uh, two planes, the gamma plane, which is my section, and the base plane, they are parallel uh, among themselves because that's exactly how I said I will draw the gamma um, in, in this particular case. It's parallel to the base. So they are parallel to each other. The section and the, and, and the bottom base. Now, ABCD is a plane which cuts them both. So AG and C uh, and, and um, AB, A, so, sorry, AG and BC, okay, and BC are intersections of uh, the plane which cuts two parallel planes. And there is a theorem about this, that they are parallel to themselves. So, BC and AG are parallel, AB and CG are parallel, um, and that's why this is parallelogram. And since this is the parallelogram, BC is equal to AG. Now, let's take any other point, C prime, and drop down this perpendicular. Um, along the surface 
uh, side surface of, uh, of a cylinder. Then I will have some other point D prime, right? And again, B C prime would be equal to A D prime. Same thing, exactly. But now, the bottom is a circle, which means A G and A D prime are equal to each other. Therefore, B C and B C prime are equal to each other. And these are two um, points which I have randomly chosen, which means that the distance from any point on this curve to B is exactly the same as is equal to radius of the bottom. And that's why it's a, it's a circle and, and, and uh, that point the, is, uh, the point B is the center of the circle. Okay, now the second problem is, well, in some way similar, but we cut differently. We cut our cylinder, instead of cutting it horizontally, we will cut it vertically. By the way, why the center, center line of a cylinder is also perpendicular to the bottom? Well, the, the, the previous theorem actually can be applied in this particular case. So the top is a plane which we have drawn parallel to the bottom, right? Which means that its center would be parallel to any other uh, generator. So I will just use the fact that these two are uh, uh, the, the center line is also perpendicular to the base, as well as every um, line on the, sur on, on the side surface, which is basically positions of the generators. So now we cut it vertically, which means we do something like this. So, in this case, uh, what, what actually it means is I'm cutting with a plane which is parallel to the, uh, the center line. So I'm cutting the cylinder with a plane parallel to the center line which is not far from the center line. It's not outside of the cylinder. It's inside of the cylinder, okay? Well, let's call it AB. C, D. Okay. Now, I would like to prove that this is a rectangle. So if you cut vertically the cylinder, you will get rectangle. Horizontally, you get the circle. Vertically, you get a rectangle. All right. So first of all, I would like to prove that this is parallelogram. And uh, to prove it, I have to prove the parallelism of the opposite sides. Well, A, B and C, G, these are easy. They are parallel because we have two parallel planes, two bases, and you have a cutting plane, A, B, C, G, right? So the result, the intersection of the cutting plane and two parallel planes are A, B and C, G, which must be parallel because of some theory which we have proven long time ago. Now let's uh, consider the parallelism between uh, these lines BD and AC okay how can we do that well let's take line AB and uh, we know the theorem I again we um, proved it in some other lecture that if you have a line and two other points And you would like to uh, draw. If you would like to draw a plane parallel to the line, which goes through these two points in space, well, the plane can be in some position, and in only one position it would be parallel to this particular. Um, line. Like in this particular case, um, I if you take all the different planes, there is only one plane which is parallel to this one. So, let me, using this, uh, prove the parallelism of BD and uh, AC to the center, to the center line. 
let's drop a perpendicular from B down to this bottom and let's consider it's not the point D let's say it's D prime and correspondingly from A we drop a perpendicular and let's say it's not C it's some kind of other line uh, a point C prime now let's consider A B C prime D prime A B C prime D prime now these are two perpendiculars which means they are parallel to this guy to the central line which means that the whole plane A B C prime D prime is um, parallel to the center line but I said that A B C D is parallel we cannot have two different planes parallel to a line and going through two given points as I was just saying so there is no way C prime or D prime would be different from correspondingly C and D they must be exactly the same points otherwise I will have two different planes parallel to center line so that's why both BD and AC are parallel to center line which means they're parallel to themselves which means this is parallelogram and also I know that um, any uh, generatrix and BD now becomes a generatrix right 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 since it's parallel to um, the center line and correspondingly perpendicular to the uh, bottom bottom base so since it's perpendicular these are um, right angles and this one is also right angles so it's a parallelogram with right angles which means it's rectangle okay next okay again we have a cylinder now that's not a good cylinder I need a shorter cylinder because I have a cube which is mm, yeah not such an easy thing let's start from the cube so I have a cube which is inscribed into cylinder Now, the cylinder is described, uh, circumscribed around the cube in such a way that the bottom base, which is a square, is inscribed into a bottom circle. This is the bottom circle. And the top base is also uh, and this is my cylinder so cylinder is around the cube or cube is inscribed into a circle in such a way that both squares are inscribed into both circles on the circle now what I do know about this is I know that the cube side where the edge of the cube is equal to D what I have to determine is um, the full surface area and the volume of the of the cylinder now let me go back and let's recall what is the area and the volume of the cylinder you remember that the area contains two bases each of them is pi r square where r is a radius and I also have a side surface now side surface if you remember I just cut it um, along one particular generatrix and open up into a flat rectangle my um, width of this rectangle would be a circumference of the uh, uh, of the circle which is which is 2 pi r
and the height of the cylinder will be the height of the rectangle will be the height of the cylinder so this is basically my area right so what I have to determine knowing G I have to determine R and H well the H is easy H is equal to D right because my cylinder completely uh, it has exactly the same uh, height as the cube right because I said that the bottom base uh, of the cylinder contains the um, the bottom face of the of the cube and the top base of the cylinder contains the top face of the cube so the distance between these two planes is uh, exactly the height of the cylinder now the radius might be slightly uh, slightly more complex but that's actually uh, very easy as well let's just consider a circle which is surrounding a square of the side D now what would be the radius of this square well let's consider this um, right triangle see this is a square right so this is um, a right triangle OAB this is the right angle so I know the hypotenuse and I do have to determine the catheters right and the catheters which is OA is equal to um, G square root of 2 over 2 right because this square plus this square should be equal to D and it is, this square will be d square over 2 and d square over 2 would be d right so this is d square root of 2 over 2 that's the radius radius is equal to d square root of 2 over 2 so now and knowing this formula I can determine that my area equals to pi r square which is um, well, actually, 2 pi r square. I'm sorry. Because we have two bases, right? 2 pi r squares. And r square is d square over 2 plus 2 pi r, which is d square root of 2 over 2, and h, which is d, equals 2, 2 pi d square I can factor out uh, d square d square and one half would be out so I will have 1 plus square root of 2 divided by 2 that's my formula that's the area okay now how about volume Well, the volume of the cylinder is, as we know, the area of the base, which is pi r square times, times the altitude, the height. Okay, in this particular case is pi, r square is d square over 2, and d. So it's pi d cube over 2. That's the volume. So everything is determined by one particular parameter d based on the fact that the cube is inscribed into a circle. So all we have to do is to de determine radius and the altitude of the uh, circle, uh, of the cylinder. Next. Okay, if you have a cylinder, prove that this particular line which connects the centers of the bases is axis of symmetry. Now, what is axis of symmetry? Well, if you remember, the symmetry relative to an axis is if you have a point, you drop a perpendicular to this line, 
from this point and extend it by the same lengths, right? Okay, so let's just take any point on the cylindrical surface. Well, this point can be either on top base, on bottom base, or a side surface. Now, speaking about um, uh, top and bottom bases, uh, obviously the situation is very easy, because it's a, um, it's a circle, right? And if you take any point here, then you can drop a perpendicular to the center line, which will be within this plane, which will be basically a connection between our point and the sector, extend it, and it will be another point on this, within this particular circle on the same distance from the, from the center. So every point on, the, uh, on, on the, any base has a symmetrical point uh, on the same base. So that's why the bottom and the top are completely symmetrical relatively to this axis because this plane is perpendicular which means when I drop the perpendicular to the axis I will basically connect it with the center and then I extend by the same lengths. Now what about any point on the surface? Well let's take any point on the surface, let's say here. And now you, when you drop a perpendicular the, the easiest way is let me just draw a plane through this point perpendicular to the center line and connect the intersection of this line, center line and this plane connect with my point. Now obviously since my center line is perpendicular to the plane that would be perpendicular to this line as well, right? Now but you remember I was just proving it before that the intersection of the plane with um, the side surface would be a circle. And for every circle from this point, if I extend it to the same, I will get the other point, the opposite point on the same circle, which is actually lying on the surface of this particular cylinder. So the symmetrical point to this point is the point on this circle, which al also belongs to um, the intersection of this plane with with a cylinder. So for every point on the cylinder uh, side surface there is a corresponding <coughs> symmetrical point relatively to this uh, center line. So that's why center line is axis of symmetry. For every point uh, on, a, uh, on a cylinder there is another point symmetrical relative to this axis on the cylinder. And, by the way, uh, incidentally, if you remember, the symmetry relative to the axis is equivalent to the rotation by 180 degree. So basically what I'm just saying is that if you will turn um, the, the cylinder by 180 degree, it will convert basically into itself, it will transform into itself. Every point would be in a different location, but within the same cylinder. Okay. Next. Um, okay, we have a cylinder and we cut it vertically on a distance D from the center line. So we cut it vertically on a distance d from the center line. So if you drop a perpendicular from the center to this chord, well, actually it's a perpendicular to um, the whole plane, but obviously since this is uh, the plane which is perpendicular to this plane, then this perpendicular would be exactly uh, a perpendicular to the intersection of these two points. Um, there was a theorem about this. If you have two intersecting planes and you uh, drop, and they are perpendicular to each other, if you drop uh, a perpendicular to the intersection line, it will be perpendicular to another plane, for obvious reasons. 
Okay, now, so I know this, this distance. I also know the parameters of the cylinder, R and H, radius and uh, the height. Now, what I have to determine is the area of this, as I know by now, a rectangle, right? Now, how can I determine the area of the rectangle? I need uh, two parameters, width and height, right? Now, how can I determine, well, the height is, is easy. The height is exactly the same as the height of the, uh, uh, of the cylinder. But the width might be a, a little bit more calculations involved. So you have a circle of radius r, and you have a chord which is on the distance g from the center. So what's the length of the chord? Well, obviously it's double this catechus, which has a hypotenuse r and another catechus g. So the half of this is square root of r square minus g square by Pythagorean theorem, but the whole chord is double. And now I have to multiply it by the height to get the area. That's it. Very small calculation based on the Pythagorean theory. Now, I was saying that all these problems are relatively easy. Next. Okay, next is the following. You remember we were inscribing a, a cube into um, uh, uh, the cylinder. Now we will inscribe a regular tetrahedron. So let me start again from a tetrahedron. It might be easier to draw. So this is a regular tetrahedron. Now I'm um, inscribing this tetrahedron into a cylinder in such a way that my uh, base triangle would be inscribed into the bottom of the uh, cylinder. And my top, my apex of my uh, triangular pyramid would, would coincide with the center of the, of the top. So that's how it looks. So this is the center of the top, and now all uh, faces of my pyramid are uh, equilateral triangles, right? Because it's a regular tetrahedron, as I said. Now, what do I know about this? I know that the H is equal to G, and I have to calculate again my area, total area of the uh, cylinder and this volume. So again, my total area is 2 pi... Um, r square, right? Pi r square is one base, another base, and the surface, if I will open it up, I will have 2 pi r circumference times h. Okay, so I have to determine r and h. Um, now, this is area. I have to determine um, r and h knowing only d. Well, first of all, let's talk about the radius of the circle. Now, if you have a circle, this is my bottom uh, base, and you have an equilateral triangle inscribed into this with side is equal to g, what is the radius of the circle? Well, That's easy. Um, so AB is equal to G. Now this midpoint, call it D. Um, now triangle ADO is a right triangle. This is obviously 30 degrees angle, right? So, 
um, what do we know about this triangle? How can I determine R? Now, we know from this triangle that AO is equal to R over 2, right? So AD is equal to square root of R square minus R square divided by 4, which is R square root of 3 over 2. So that's my AD. Now, I know that AD is actually half of the D, right? So this is half of the D. From which follows that R is equal to D divided by square root of 3, or D multiplied by square root of 3 divided by 3. Fine. This is done. R is determined. Now let's determine the height of this uh, pyramid, because it's exactly the same as the height of the cylinder, right? So let's drop the perpendicular here, and let's connect. Now, obviously, this is perpendicular. This is the center, so this is the center. Uh, so if this is A, B, C, now O, A is a catechus, which I do know. That's R. Right? Uh, top SA, I also know this is D. So I have a right triangle SOA where I know the hypotenuse and one catechus. Now I have to determine the second catechus. So the second catechus would obviously be equals to D square hypotenuse minus this square, which is D square divided by 3, which is uh, D square root of 2 divided by square root of 3, which is D square root of 6 divided by 3. So that's my H. D square root of 6 divided by so I know both radius of the base and the height, so I can determine what's my area. Okay. This is just a simple algebraic exercise. Now, the area is equal to 2 pi r square, which is d square divided by 3, plus 2 pi r and h multiplied, so it's d square divided by 9 multiplied by square root of 2, square root of 3, and square root of 3, right? Square root of 6 is square root of 2 times square root of 3, so this is 3, this is 3, which is equal to 2 pi d square 1 plus square root of 2 divided by 3. That's my formula. That's the total surface. Now the volume, the volume is equal to um, area of the base, right, which is p pi r square times h times the height. Area of the surface, uh, of the base times height, which is equal to pi d square divided by 3 times d square root of 6 divided by 3, which is pi d cube square root of 6 divided by 9. That's the answer. Well, that's it. That's the last problem. I hope you will try to do exactly the same thing as I did, just by yourself. I strongly suggest you to do it. That's a very good exercise. And good luck. That's it. Thank you very much.